Welcome to another episode of the Longevity Blueprint Podcast. Today, my guest is Dr. Annika Becca. She is known as the Girlfriend Doctor, is a triple board certified Emory University trained OB-GYN. She speaks from experience. She has risen from her own ashes of personal tragedy that spiraled into depression from not one, but two rounds of menopause, weight gain, hair loss, and many other debilitating symptoms. Her journey led her around the world to learn about true health and natural healing. Dr. Anna came away empowered with the knowledge that modern medical training and research combined with time-tested wisdom and remedies will yield indisputable results. Dr. Anna is the author of two best-selling books, The Hormone Fix, a groundbreaking holistic lifestyle program for menopausal women, and Keto Green 16, a comprehensive nutritional plan to staying healthy and slim at any age. She's also spent years developing and perfecting a complete suite of life-changing products and programs that we're going to talk about today. Everything Dr. Anna develops is part of her own daily routine and based on her exhaustive research and never-ending quest to find solutions that help women reclaim their vibrancy, sexuality, health, and happiness. So welcome to the show, Dr. Kabeka. <laughs> it is great to be here with you. Thanks for having me, Stephanie. Well, as I mentioned in your bio, you two have a story that led you to write your books and create your healing products. So Let's start with that. Let's start with your story. What really drove you to become the girlfriend doctor? Yeah, you know, it is, um, you know, the saying, our mess becomes our message. So I think it my, um, it started with my doctor's bag was completely empty, you know, exhausted everything in my doctor's bag and the best of my uh, colleagues. um, Also, their doctor's bags were empty. And it was just said that I was early menopause at 39. Mm. infertile. And the only chance, cause we were so de- desiring to have a, a baby at that time, another baby. And, um, that the only chance I would have would be egg donation. And so it was grief upon grief because Stephanie mm. and yeah, and my story that we lost our son, our only son in a tragic accident. And so the consequences of that, that tragedy, that trauma, the grief and, yeah. and, um, really affected Affected my hormones. And yet we didn't make the connection. The reproductive endocrine, endocrinologist didn't make the con- connection. My fellow OBGYNs didn't make the connection, just said, okay, oh, you're early menopause. I mean, that's just early menopause. And it is what it know, is. Yeah. Egg, egg donation is <laughs> yeah. what it is. Right. And I said, well, well you know what? It's not a choice for us at this time. And that led me on a journey. Really, I took a sabbatical from my practice and led me on a a journey around the world looking for answers. And so as a result of that journey and many of the answers that that I found, I was able to reverse that early menopause. And not only that, but become pregnant with my beautiful baby girl, Mm. Ava Marie. So I was hoping you were going to say that. (laughs) Yes, yes. At it for had her at 41, the child I was told I would never be able to have. And um and that's just, you know, and that was a result. That was a result of these these practices and and products that I now implement and write about. Yeah. And and you know, certainly, certainly was not something that I stud- I learned about in medical school. Like reverse mm-hmm. early menopause. What? Mm-hmm. I mean, what? like yeah. the chance of that is like we just don't even talk about it, right? That mm-hmm. chance is so like unlikely. And, um, it, you know, and then not understanding the effect of trauma and PTSD and how mm-hmm. that would affect me and continue to affect me. So as a result of that, I'm just passionate about getting the word out and helping others just restore their hormone balance and health. I'm 54 now with a 13 yeah. year old. She just turned 13. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's been it's been, it's been a journey. It's so important to stay healthy. And I love what, you know, we talk about, you know, my platform is all about helping women through menopause, breeze through menopause. And as the Japanese say into your second spring, they call menopause the second spring, this time of life. I think that's a really beautiful, better way to talk about it than what we do here in, in, in the States. Sure. I love hearing your story and I was hoping there would be a happy ending there. And there are several happy endings. Not only were you able to restore your health and your hormones and have a baby, now you're helping others do the same. So I love that. So let's break down hormones and talk about what they are, how they influence my health and how they change as we age. We've talked a lot about a lot about that on this podcast, but it doesn't hurt to just continuously go over that. Listeners need to hear it over and over again, how important their hormones are. So what are they? How do they influence our health and, and what changes as we age? Yeah, you know, and and hormones are amazing. They're really energetic messengers, not just chemical messengers, hormone messengers, they're energetic messengers that communicate with our body, just, you know, communicate different parts of our body and different cells and 
different organs. It's pretty darn magical. And this is the issue with hormones, why it's hard. And many doctors say, well, we can't test your hormones or this, that there are ways we can test. There's no perfect way, but there are ways we can test. And it's the reason there's no perfect way is because they are energetic molecules. Mm -hmm. And so we're just beginning to understand them. Each hormone has an energy, like each person has an energy and our energy shift day by day. I don't know about you, but <laughs> you know, mostly I've got really great energy, but there's some days, especially Not after just, uh, by yeah. hour by hour, yeah. <laughs> hour by hour. Right. And so so energy shifts, and that's really important to understand. They also all interact with each other. So I like to describe uh, hormones as our, you know, as our, like there's a whole body of hormones and that are communicating with each other. And to give a visual of this, think of like a, a classroom or a university setting, you know, a grand university setting. And at, in the, in the, you know, in the um, classroom, there's all different people, right? Each one has their own unique purpose, their mission, their giftings, and that's hormones. That's the bundle of hormones. But they, and that includes our reproductive hormones and, you know, like estrogen, testosterone, DHEA, hormones that I spent my career in, in Boku Buck studying, right? But these are actually the minor hormones. They are the body of hormones, but at the front of the classroom are your, are your professors or your teachers, right? Your leaders. And this would be where these really special hormones come in that I are, are major players and that's insulin and cortisol. Mm. And as I, I was study, studying OBGYN and studying all these hormones and really dialing in, you know, progesterone and estrogen, I always wanted to get to the underlying, underlying issues. What are the smallest changes I need to make to get the best results? Well, yeah. you have to go to the major hormones. So insulin and cortisol be those major hormones. Then think of the dean of the university or the principal of the school, and that is oxytocin. I call it the crowning hormone, the mother hormone, the hormone that when that oxytocin is, is, is charged up in the lead, running appropriately, well-grounded, right? A priority, doing the right stuff then everyone else falls into place. But when there's chaos with oxytocin, insulin, cortisol, your, the entire student body are out partying <laughs> on a beach somewhere in disorganized fashion. And that's kind of like our hormone system. <laughs> hormone I, like system. That. I haven't heard that analogy. And, and I want to come back to oxytocin because we haven't talked a lot about that on this podcast. So I want My to favorite to hormone. But, but let's, yes. let's go back because of your story and the stress your body was under, right? Let's come back to cortisol for a second here. So Hormones are sensitive to stress, especially between the ages of 35 and 60, which it sounds like is when you had some major stress in your life. And I would agree with that. I'm in that, that age demographic as well. And I have a busy practice and trying to be a mom, or I just have a lot going on right now. So let's talk about stress and the impact of stress on our hormones, specifically our adrenals and cortisol. Like, let's talk about that relationship. Yes, absolutely. And then this is where I didn't understand it until I lived it. Right. Mm -hmm. And we know that cortisol is, um, you know, a, a master hormone, one of, you know, our survivor hormone, we need it or we would die. And in fact, people who can't produce it do. And that's really that we have to supplement with cortisol and certain yeah. people like with Addison's disease or something. Yep. And so cortisol is this life-saving hormone but when we're under stress or in my case, post-traumatic stress, there's this constant, like, and you're constantly triggered and there are chronic everyday stress, like in a pandemic with lots of uncertainty, for instance, there's chronic cord, you know, watching the news on a nightly right. basis. I mean, there's chronic cortisol that's going to deplete our progesterone, which is one of our neuroprotective hormones that helps make every, I mean, all our other hormones in our body, like our, our derived, our reproductive hormones are derived from progesterone. So cortisol is going to deplete that progesterone. The other thing too, is when cortisol is up for too long, I mean, it's frying out our nervous system. It's the most acidifying caustic hormone in our body. And, um, and, and so when that's happening, you know, cortisol's up, the paraventricular nucleus in the brain's like, Hey, you're frying me out. I got to shut you down. So it suppresses the adrenal gland production of cortisol in, in however it does it. And at the same time, because when cortisol goes up, oxytocin goes down. Mm. So when cortisol is up for a long time and then is suppressed, cortisol is down and oxytocin is down at the same time, also suppressed. And this is that dangerous, very dangerous place where, you know, there's isolation, depression, 
Mm. There's that sense of not feeling love. Like, huh, I, I would hear it after I experienced this. I, I heard this from so many. I, I love my husband, but I don't feel love for him. I love my work, but I don't feel, I loved my work, but I don't feel love for it anymore. Sure. You know, it's that feeling that this is a physiologic, I, I say it's the physiology of divorce because with this low cortisol, low oxytocin, that's the physiology of disconnect. Mm. You go into a crowded room of people you love and you're like, I'm all alone. Nobody likes me. You know, whatever the situation, I mean, you're that, yeah. that very terrible state. And, and I was there, I was there after PTSD chronically. And, you know, I, I had a, a bit of a lift of oxytocin with the delivery of my daughter and breastfeeding things were good. Marriage was better. And then after, you know, everything dissolved, the marriage dissolved, I burned out from mm -hmm. business and that's that chronic cortisol, oxytocin disconnect. And I was like, what's happening? I love my work. I loved my husband. I don't feel love anymore. And that was a really, that was a really powerful discovery. I had to understand what was happening. And so that is, that is the consequence of chronic stress. And now during pandemic, I'm hearing it increase in mm -hmm. breakups, increase in roommate splitting up, increase in divorces, increase in burnout, increase of job, you know, you know, leaving a job, not even if you have one, you know what I mean? So there's a lot of this burnout going on right now. And there's a physiology to this. Yes. And I, and I also, I feel like there's been a lot of infertility. I know there's a joke that there's going to be all yes. these COVID babies because people are home, but if they're stressed out, they're not going to be able to, you know, have high quality eggs and, and have, yeah, um, great fertility outcomes. So I think that as well. So we've talked a lot about that on this podcast, as far as stress, right? Initially can raise your cortisol, but what we haven't talked about is what happens with oxytocin. You're saying that, that that connection hormone that you have when you're, you know, breastfeeding, you have a child, right? <laughs> um, that you oxytocin sex, right? plummets. Next you do your husband. Yeah. Yes. It, it, plummets. It plummets. And so plummets. I can see why uh, all the more reason why we need to get the cortisol well down. We don't want it to crash, but we want, we're going to get our adrenals back in shape um, because I'm then assuming that's part of how we would restore our oxytocin. I don't know what the answer is. I know I can prescribe Absolutely. oxytocin, but <laughs> I'm assuming that's part of um, yeah, getting oxytocin levels back to where they need to be. Yeah, you can prescribe it, but that's not the number one answer. That's a short-term yep. fix. And we don't want to prescribe it long-term because then we'll deplete our body's ability to decrease to our it. body's ability to make it. Exactly. Like with any, whenever we're using hormones, I want to use the lowest effective dose, but in a, in a healthy way, right? And so with oxytocin, we want to do the things that increase oxytocin. So yeah. this is the lifestyle. And this is where I kind of built it into my keto green or keto alkaline plans that yeah. I write about. Yeah. And it is that oxytocin is the most alkalinizing hormone in our body. And when we are in this healthier state, and I'm talking about, you know, like our blood pH will, will stay stable, right? When we talk about blood pH, we know it's going to stay stable. We're going to draw a blood pH from our radial artery, arterial blood gas, and because the venous pH change changes, right? But arterial blood gas is going to stay as close to homeostasis as possible. It's close to 7.4, slightly alkaline as possible. And, our, and we will rob Peter to pay Paul yep. to get it there. Yep. But cancer, chronic maltrition, starvation, all these things create a more of acidic. And what we use as a vital sign, what I learned to use was my um, urine pH. So checking urine pH as a vital sign. I think everyone should do that. It is a huge biomarker. It's a vital sign. It's as important as your blood pressure and your pulse in figuring out how you're interacting with your body. The, what I found is that when we incorporate, you know, oxy, you know, oxytocin activities, our urine pH becomes more alkaline. So gratitude, journaling, laughter, play, having great sex, having a part, you know, having a great time out with your friends and, you know, and, and these things they can say, Oh my God, I, you know, I even ate terribly, but I'm so alkaline today because I had so much fun and laughed my ass off at that, you know, with my girlfriends last night or whatever it may be. Right. And oxytocin is so alkalinizing. So the gratitude journaling, the walk on the beach, the things that decrease cortisol increase that you find joy in that brings you joy, that makes you smile when you think about it, incorporating more of that into your life increases oxytocin and helps you reset this, this oxytocin cortisol balance. I want to make sure for the listeners that they're following. So you're saying cortisol makes you more acidic, right? That stress hormone makes you more acidic and oxytocin is more alkalinic. 
Is that what, yes. am I hearing you right? Okay. I just want to make sure. <laughs> so then what is the yes, goal? Yeah. So if someone wants to gauge that, you're saying that benchmark, if you can test your, your urine pH, what is their goal? So the higher the number is more alkaline. So just for the listener, so where do they want to be? We want to get it over seven. So between diet and all right, and attitude and gratitude and all these good things between diet and lifestyle, we want that urine pH to, to healthfully like wake up above seven, go to bed at seven, okay. you know, and that's kind of working towards that. You know, right now I'm, I'm just done a 72 hour water and herbal tea fast, one cup of coffee. And, um, before this and, podcast, you know, you're just, just <laughs> I, I did. I just, That's I nuts. just broke my fast with a beautiful <laughs> keto green salad and a keto green smoothie. I'm like, oh yeah, it, it's, it's, um, but I, you know, I, you know, it's important. I was on vacation last week, Stephanie, yeah. I was in Mexico, yeah, yeah. you know, a little too much tequila, you know, needed really to reset <laughs> the <laughs> great reset. So, um, so it, you know, this really does, this really does help. And so looking at, you know, checking urine pH, getting it above seven has been a really important marker for me. And now thousands of women in my online groups, just yeah. checking what happens when you are in different situations. It's not, we normally have a acidic urine pH when we, after we exercise or when we're stressed, when we have too much acidic foods. And as part of, you know, part of my discovery process and helping women balance their hormones when we're in ketosis and in an alkaline with an alkaline urine pH physiology, I mean, you just feel amazing. You feel energized and not in a hyped up way. You feel clear, the fog's lifted. I call it energized enlightenment. You feel more spiritually connected, more in tune and yeah. clearer with your intuition. It's really a beautiful place to be. And so just checking urine pH can make a really big difference and just seeing what happens when you're under different situations. So. I want to come back to that into kind of the keto green approach that you created. But before we get there, I want to go back to hormones for a moment because we talked a little bit about stress's impact on the hormones. But what role does gut health kind of play on our hormones and on our ability to manage stress and inflammation? How does gut yeah. health tie in here? Well, I think we can't fix, I mean, really near impossible to fix our hormones if we don't fix our gut. So that's between diet nutrition, taking away the sugar, improving the diversity of our gut bacteria, because we know we have the estrobilome and especially important for women and men, because you see men with man boobs, we call them moobs. We, we don't want that. And we don't want women with breast, lumpy breast, breast diseases, breast cancer, and, you know, not to mention anxiety and depression, insomnia, all the things that from and imbalanced gut bacteria or imbalanced hormones can, you know, that result from that. So the strobilone is really essential for estrogen metabolism. And if we have unhealthy pathways, then we, you know, unhealthy, it, it, it mean, we know that it increases our risk for these other inflammatory diseases. So gut health is really important. So my three day fast was part of like 72 hours for to re-epithelialize. And so you can do it many ways. I would never have anyone start out with three day water fast, right? So you'd start out with a keto green fast and just like smoothies and bone broth, or then a, just a bone broth fast. And again, bone broth is very alkalinizing, very alkalinizing, rich in fat, rich in collagen, very healing to the GI tract. I'm going to make some a little bit later. I think I'm just craving <laughs> some bone broth now. Let's keep the healing going, right? And um, and, and so you can do, you can do bone broth fast and with some keto green shakes. So again, eliminating sugar, very low allergy, good, you know, quality protein, and then just see how your, see how your body does over time. And I think that is really a big part of a part of this process. Totally agreed. So what about sexual health? So I would ask, uh, well, my favorite this? topic, you know, that. <laughs> So you have some products here that can, that can help in that arena, but why is this a relevant topic to all women, regardless of if they're, you know, having, if they have a sex life or not, like, why, why is this important? And I, I oftentimes on these podcasts, previous podcasts have talked about how important testosterone is for libido and sex drive and whatnot. And I, and I have a feeling you're going to talk about a lot more than that. So let's, let's, I'll, I'll ask about your opinion on sexual health. And like you said, you like talking about this topic. So I'll just let you take it away. 
Yeah, I do love talking. And I've lectured, I've, I've taught physicians, I've, I lecture on women's sexual health all over, all over the world. I've talked um, Brazil and Portugal and Poland and Israel. I mean, name it. I've been all over wow. talking about this. I'm so passionate about this topic because universally, there's no area more vulnerable to any individual or couple than our sexual health our sexuality, mm. our sexual health, our sexual response. We are so vulnerable when it comes to this. And as a privilege, as a gynecologist and obstetrician and working with couples, husbands and wives, getting to know them, because I was the sole, solo practice for years, get to know a couple and then postpartum problems that they can have with sex and intimacy problems. Because I had such a beautiful relationship and taking care of them and during their pregnancy, husbands also felt very comfortable talking with me about these issues. And so, and that just, that just kind of just, you know, uh, was a really became a really big part of my practice is helping couples with this issue, whether it's lack of desire and, and why that is, whether it's caused by discomfort with intercourse, and especially as we get older, vaginal dryness is, you know, and chronic stress will cause vaginal dryness too. So, um, chronic stress, pain, postpartum pain. And I, I knew about that because I had, um, an anterior, uh, tear with my first preg pregnancy delivery. And I hurt for a year. I couldn't have, it hurt like mm -hmm. hell to have sex. Right. And no, I'm an OB, right. And no, like, I didn't know what yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah. I know what to do now. So, and pelvic floor therapists, thank God for them. Right. And Joel, like one of the products I created, thank God for it because it really does help restore. And, and so, um, but with vaginal dryness, if you have pain every time you do something, why would you want to? Right. You're just going right. to take sex off the table. Mm -hmm. And there are other reasons. There's certainly medications that can cause issues with vaginal health. Uh, even antihistamines can decrease your ability to orgasm. How many people are on antihistamines at this season of the year, right? Yeah. Um, so allergy meds. And so these are things that can really affect your, your sex drive and for both, for both men, sexual function for both men and women. And especially during this transition time period in perimenopause and menopause, men are going through andropause and initially women's vaginal dryness and decrease in lubrication happens before men's erectile issues typically, but then, so there's this disconnect. He doesn't want to cause her pain and she's just going to power through, you mm -hmm. know? And, and so there's also a disconnect in the bedroom. And then what happens? Less orgasm, less pleasure, less intimacy, less oxytocin, the hormone that keeps yeah. us together, mm -hmm. right? Do you see how this plays out? Yes. And it's, it's unnecessary. It's so unnecessary because we can reverse erectile issues. We can reverse vaginal dryness issues, and we can do it naturally without a prescription pad for the most part. And so this is a really important piece. And so there are many reasons that, you know, are, and again, you know, vaginal health tied into gut health too. Mm -hmm. So keto green, healthy fats, healthy, diverse, good bacteria within our gut, plant foods help with gut diversity. And same with vaginal bacteria, there's vaginal many strains of lactobacilli in the vagina and other strains of bacteria. And that's important, right? And we don't want yeast in there and we right. don't want any inflammatory stuff in there. And, you know, and, and certainly like no dirty dicks in there, right? We don't want anything unnecessary in the vagina. So, and that goes with, with hormones too, because I, I love using, I loved using, um, vag I love using bioidentical hormone creams, including testosterone, DHEA, mm -hmm. estrogen, progesterone, yeah, but I hated it, you know, inserting anything into the vagina. And if I don't have to, I would say, if it doesn't give you pleasure, don't put it in there. You don't have to, but sometimes you need to really to restore vaginal health, especially women with incontinence or, yeah. or cystoceles or prolapse. You, sometimes we want, we mm. will do, but as a maintenance, like topical creams, and that's why I created Jolva with DHEA and plant stem cells and some really other key ingredients to help yeah, the vaginal us. floor. But tell us more about that. So she's alluding yeah. to a, a product, one of her products, which is called Dolva, J-O-L-V-A. J-U-L-V-A. J-U-L. Like Vulva Sorry, with like a Vulva J. Like uh, okay. So, um, so this is a non-estrogen based <laughs> non cream. Non-estrogen. Yeah. So go back over those main ingredients and why you formulated this product to have those in and who should use this. Yeah, I was a big referral physician. I had patients from all over the world and, um, and especially patients that kind of hit those, those end of the roads, like our breast cancer patients and patients who had had GYN cancer 
ulcers and other issues, like, and even with MS and severe dryness issues, right? So I, um, I started to be a referral physician because I was really loving using bio, and I looked at the research. So what could I offer my breast cancer patients that were same, that were safe and could restore sexual function? And so that's how I learned about DHEA and testosterone and started implementing that and then also using it before my surgery, such as incontinence surgeries or cystocele or prolapse surgeries to create healthier tissue. Yeah. Well, the better and better I got at that, Stephanie, the less I the needed surgery to surgery from, <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. The com right. patient completely healed. And so with Jolva, because when I closed my practice in 2015, I burn out, closed my practice. That was like before. And that's what I write about in the hormone fix. Um, you know, I get it be at that point, you know, I mean, I mean, like, I swear, well, how many years ago was that? Like, you know, almost eight sure. years ago. So I was, I was at least 20 years older than I am now. Right. And, and at that time I was brain fog, burnout, blah. And, um, that was a, a point of, of struggle is down turn that from PTSD and burnout that I learned. And so that's why I now implement, you know, every, like I learned what I've learned to teach. So, but part of this, my patients were like, Dr. Anna, no one will give us your hormone creams. And so I'm like, oh, I can create a cosmetic cream. I was a chemist before I went to med school. I'd had a skincare line and I'm like, I'm very picky about the ingredients of what we put in or on our bodies. And so I, I worked to create this, um, this cream and just started using it. And I love it because we don't have to use it vaginally. It clitoris to anus. And I call that the most valuable real estate of our body. And it makes a difference. Like we worry about aging lines here, 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 uh, the aging lines that we get down there <laughs> that happen to a hundred percent of us as we age, we can reverse those to a really significant degree. So using this, this cream topically and prior to intercourse and can go on the penis as well. I mean, this is, and can go on the upper lips too. I'm coming out with a lip formula. Mm -hmm. Don't you worry. Exciting. And uh, yeah. And so, but you know, it makes a huge, makes a huge difference. So to help with, to help with integrity, the healing of the skin, the, um, with Kegel exercises, the decrease in bladder leaks, we have people that, you know, I'm getting, and myself in my forties would do a high intensity class and, and wet myself during, during, I'm like, uh, uh, that's not acceptable. That will keep you from exercising. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I'm doing high intensity hit classes harder than I've ever done it, at 54 than I did that. 34. So, so um, yeah, postpartum can do some do doozy. So we can restore it. No surgery, right? No surgery. And this is really important. So with pelvic floor exercises and, and the right ingredients, the right nutrition, the right diet, the right habits, the right lifestyle, we can reverse these things. It's not no such thing as one magic pill or magic cream or anything, but yeah, I, I, you know, Jelva is on my vanity. It's in my bathroom. You know, I think it should be on every woman's vanity and, and definitely uh, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So that's what's come out. We have thousand over 1500 five-star testimonials on my website wow. that just will make you cry. Wow. So beautiful. Save my marriage. I can exercise again. I'm playing with my kids or grandkids. And, you know, I was able to get, be intimate again with my husband after 10 year hiatus. I mean, you know, or, you know, there's so many beautiful stories out there. So, and it, it does make a difference. It certainly is part of my daily regimen. That's a non-estrogen based. So for cancer patients, they can use it. So that's, we have a lot of oncologists yeah. that are recommending it to their patients, which is so nice. And we're getting great results. So that is something that we will post a link to in the show notes because that sounds exciting. I'd like to try that myself. <laughs> well, I'm going to send you some stuff. <laughs> so let's go back to diet for a moment because you just mentioned that as well, but I want to hear more from you about you know, this keto green kind of approach that you've created, right? So most women, yes, want to balance their hormones, but of course they want to lose weight in the process as well. So you've created kind of this, this novel approach to help women over 50 beat the bulge. <laughs> uh, so tell us about this yeah. approach and why it works so well and why it helps to balance their hormones. You've alluded a little bit to that, but let's expand on that. Yeah. So, um, and it really comes from the second, you know, another part of my story is that when I was 48, just burnout, struggling, single mom at this point, managing two teenagers and a wee one in elementary school. And then overnight, like after having lost, you know, I'd been well over 240 pounds, lost over 80 pounds, kept it off for nearly a decade. And then, you know, overnight, 
without doing anything different, right? Stephanie, your patients will come in and say, you know, I say hey, it all the time. Um, yep. Without doing anything different, I'm gaining weight. And I'm like, yeah, I bet there's a Snickers bar in your purse or you're driving through for an extra meal or you're not exercising as much, but serious, God will make me humble. And without doing anything different, I gained 20 pounds overnight, nothing different. So, you know, I'm like, what the heck's happening? And that's what I write about in my second book, Keto Green 16, the 13 weight management hormones of menopause. It's not just about estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Those were dialed in. Thyroid, no, dialed in, right? Dialed in. That's my expertise. That was dialed in. What else? was going on. Right. And so here I was like, well, first of all, you know, and then brain fog, irritability, snapping at my children, like, who's this monster that showed up this morning? Like, where did she come from? You know, and, and, and I mean, seriously, ask my kids, they will not hold back and tell you, you know? And so, um, and so this is a really important, that was part of my discovery. First of all, I was like, okay, well, I knew about the keto diet because my oldest daughter had C seizures at, um, mm. and I know about keto for helping with seizures as well as a keto or carbohydrate restricted diet for helping my patients with ye chronic yeast infections or candidiasis. Right. And so I'm like, okay, cutting out all carbs. And like, you know, within a week, I felt like I was hitting a wall. Like I didn't like how I felt and I was like, what's going on. And so that led me to do something that I told my patients to do when I'm detoxing them, check urine pH, like what's happening, checking my blood, checking my urine pH, what's going on here was as acidic as the pH paper read. My urine pH was as acidic as the pH paper read. And that was a big eye-opening moment for me because it was like an aha moment. It was like, oh, no wonder I feel irritable. No wonder I don't feel grounded. I feel inflamed. I feel on edge. You know, I'm not, I'm not at this, this, that healthy base baseline, basic foundation that my body will thrive at, that we know based on research that more alkaline, if we maintain a more alkaline urine, we have less risk of diabetes, heart disease, inflammatory disease, cancer, osteoporosis, et cetera. So I, that for me was like, okay, let's start adding all the low carbohydrate greens. I mean, beet greens, I'd thrown those away for years, right? Beet greens are one of the most alkalinizing, nutritious, amazing foods. And, um, and, you know, cruciferous vegetables and spinach and kale and started adding all this into my, to my diet. And then also with that, starting to get more alkaline, feeling better, and, you know, doing more and more intermittent fasting, because it took me a long time to get into ketosis. Again, I am a scientist. I measure, you know, what gets measured gets managed, right? We know that in business and in personal life, what gets measured gets managed. And so, you know, checking urine ketone, what's my, what's my glucose level? What's my urine ketones? What's my blood ketones? What's going on, you know, with my urine pH, what's happening each part of this day. I mean, it was very fascinating to me. And so as I did that in the mornings, I would get up in the morning and I would go out for a walk on the beach or go out and do my gratitude journaling before I start my day. I was more alkaline all day, more wow. alkaline, more grounded, nicer all day. That's the power of oxytocin and decreasing cortisol. Mm -hmm. That's the power. And so in, in my book, my, my first book, the hormone fix, I really talk about those ways that we can increase oxytocin in our life and how physiologically powerful that is, right? Laughter, family connection, most powerful medicine there there is. And I'll share with you that as a practice, because again, I told you single mom, teenagers, you know, not loving me post divorce, right? And all girls, and a we went in elementary school and three different schools, and I'm doing this supporting my family doing this all, and burnt, you know, burnout at the time. And as I started doing this, like kind of from spiraling down re, you know, changing my energy from this negative spiral into this really positive grounded place. I remember one morning, so like typical morning would be the girls told me this, she goes, you know, mom, you remember when you would just, we were late to school and you drive through Starbucks just because we were late anyway. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that. And so like from that hectic, because I'd have to drive them all to three different schools. Right. And so, um, I remember specifically as I'm doing this and really working on that gratitude practice and, you know, like focusing on where did I see love and where was I loving and where could I laugh at myself? And that part of that gratitude journaling practice, I remember one morning I came downstairs and I was like, oh man, I got to get up and get everyone, you know, like everyone ready. And then 
my, one of my teenage daughters came down and she's like, Hey mom, yeah, I'm ready for school. I'll fix breakfast. I'm like, what, who's this child? Big love on her face. And she's like, gives me a kiss as she goes, catch the school bus she's on time. And then my little one comes out and says, I love you, mom. And gets off to catch the school bus on time. And I was like, what alternate universe did I come into? <laughs> and that's why I, I say this because we sacrifice to make sure everyone else is better. But let me tell you, when we are healthier, when we are grounded, when we have a strong foundation, when we are just have this, you know, this, when our cup is full, everyone else is better, especially our children around us especially when you see your children starting to go in different directions, bounce off walls, check your energy first. What conduit are we for them? And that's why our health is critically important for the health of our family. That's so good. So good. When our cup is full and everyone else is <laughs> better too. Mm-hmm. I, I love that. Well, you kind of already so alluded much to better. I, I was going to ask you, what is your daily routine? Like, what do you eat? What are your lifestyle practices? And you kind of just shared a few of those, but Can you tell us what a a day in the life of Dr. Anna is like? Yeah, I'll actually give today and I always really working on staying in the present. That's a key staying in the present. So before I get out of bed in the morning, I think to myself, where did I see love? Where was I loving? And where did I laugh at myself or could have laughed at myself? And and this morning, sometimes it's just one I thought like, you know, what was what was so you know, where did I see love yesterday? And it was just something that Ava did with the horses and, you know, out at the barn. I'm just laughing on the way home as we talked about it. And that was just a moment I could reflect on that just was, that was perfect. That was good for me. And I get out and I got to six o'clock hot yoga class, infrared hot yoga here in Dallas. It's amazing. And I'm now addicted, which I don't <laughs> like exercise at all. I'd rather sit on a couch and read all day. Uh, um, so, yeah, it, you know, I did that, got my daughter um, off to school, breakfast and packed her lunch, um, got her off to school. And then I just, I prepare for my day and about uh, 10 a.m. I broke fast with a keto green smoothie. And I just had um, at one, you know, just before our call at 12 o'clock, I followed that keto green smoothie with a keto green salad, which had just lettuce and some turkey meat and um, some za'atar, which is a thyme spice and sesame seeds. Sesame seeds are really great for hormone balancing. It's one of my favorites too. And um, some olive oil, some uh, Himalayan sea salt, some pepper on it and avocado. So that's a typical, very good keto green salad. And so that um, the rest of the day, if I, if I eat again, which I may or may not haven't decided, we'll see how the day goes, which is nice, but I'll have like a keto, a light keto green dinner. I like to try to eat by five or 6 PM. Ideally we'll see how it goes with kids schedule, you know, and, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll work today till we have classes in our girlfriend doctor lo- uh, club live Q and A today. So till about seven o'clock or six o'clock, and take and then. So that's kind of the evening routine tonight because my daughter has Bible study. Take her to Bible study. Um, the bedtime will be a little later. So typically, like winding down around 9 30, 10 o'clock, sure. and really working on that evening ritual. So that evening ritual and, you know, maybe having a cup of tea, a hot cup of tea and some evening supplements and, um, really focusing on, you know, just allowing myself to have that good night's sleep, which I have had to prioritize because as an OB and in solo practice, there were years I didn't sleep. Uh, I bet bet you you're beating me to my questions because I was about to ask you what one of your favorite recipes is, but you just told me your salad, but which was great. So tell me about the smoothie, the keto green smoothie. What what's in there? Yeah. So I use my, my, Maca Plus, which is my herbal adaptogenic combination with over 30 superfoods. And so it's very alkalinizing. So I put a, a scoop or two today, I put two scoops in and my, I use a keto green shake mix, which I created again, I'm very picky, right? So I wanted things that were clean and there's nothing on the market like it. So, and it's all vegan protein, but with nuts and seeds as well yeah. as some plant-based per other plant-based proteins and, um, and other, you know, full complement of a very bio 
multivitamins and nutrients. So that keto green to add the protein and then adding some extra fat with some MCT oil okay. and, um, and a quarter of an avocado because the avocado is seriously the trick, right? You can also use zucchini, frozen zucchini, but avocado makes your smoothie so creamy. creamy yep. It's just so, yep. so, creamy, so good. Yep. So creamy. And, um, what else did I put in there? Sometimes if I have other greens, I may put them in there today. I didn't. And yeah, that was it. That was it. Water and ice. Oh yeah. Some coconut, coconut cream Yum. in there so, too, just to add additional healthy fat. So you kind of changed your diet to eating this way and you created the product right to support that lifestyle and you were able to lose the weight. Is this, is this an approach for women who are also not in menopause yet? Is this an approach for all women that they can be successful with? Yeah, this is really, I think this is the way we need to eat through menopause with the keto green way with intermittent fasting, at least 13 to 16 hours between dinner and breakfast, some occasional longer fasting, like I've just done and, and just avoiding breaking up with sugar altogether. But now I say that, mm -hmm. and I still like my feast days. I'm a true glutton at heart. I love my feast days. I love my wine. I love my chocolate. I love these things. And it's really important for metabolic flexibility. So we can't, do the same thing, the same food day in, day out. Seasons over and change over and over, for a yep. reason. Yep. 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 And so that metabolic green. flexibility is really important. I don't think, I don't think the keto green way is just a good idea. You know, I think it's mandatory pause and beyond because as we get into ketosis and really focus on, you know, hormonal health, bone health, you know, anti-inflammatory, the whole keto alkaline way, our brain uses ketones for fuel preferentially, you know, if glucose isn't available, right? But the issue is as we get older, the a brain's ability to use glucose for fuel, as research has shown, it's hormone dependent. So as our hormones are plummeting, our brain is starving. So this may be part of the reason that women have over twice as much Alzheimer's as men. So we want to avoid that completely. So it's not just a good idea. Uh, it, is, it is a way of life. It is a way of life and it's a really good, easy way of life. It takes time. This is, it takes time. This is your book here. Yeah, I agree. And you, I mean, you, in both your books, you have recipes. There's, I mean, the whole back of this book is wonderful recipes. So I encourage the listeners, check that out for sure. You have given us so many helpful tips, encouraging tips, I'm sure, to many of them. But I have to ask what your top longevity tip would be. I ask all my guests that. So what would your top longevity tip be? It can be something you've already mentioned. What's your answer? Yeah. There? Yeah. You know, I, gosh, oh my goodness. I, you know, the, like I'm debating all these things, you know, everything comes to my head, like, you know, get keto green, check your urine pH, get that alkaline. I mean, all the, you know, exercise move daily. I think the number one longevity tip is have good relationships, mm, have loving, good. good relationships with yourself, with God, with others. I love that. I've, no one has said that. I've asked this Oxytocin. question, you know, 70 times. So <laughs> no one has said that. So I, I like that. Good, unique answer. Thank well, you. tell us where listeners can find you. Easy to find me at dranna.com. So D-R-A-N-N-A.com. And on Instagram at the girlfriend doctor and, and we have a thriving keto green community on Facebook. Wonderful. And I know you also have a free gift for our listeners. So tell us about that. Yeah. So we're going to send you to a gift page, which has some free samples, my Jolva sample and just small amount for shipping. So a Jolva trial, so that's seven nights of Jolva. You can smell it, feel it. It's just amazing. And you're going to want, you're going to want it. I mean, seriously, it is <laughs> something I consider essential, but you know, essential vanity stuff, um, for your vanity for sure. And, um, and longevity. And then also it has a free four trial pack for Mighty Maca, my adaptogenic formula and some, um, a hormone quiz to just kind of check in to see where you're at. Like sure. what is your, you know, what is your toxic the hormone toxicity score and what get, again, what gets measured, get managed. And sometimes we, we can follow lab work, but ideally how are our symptoms? And often, you know, like within a couple of weeks, we see our symptom score decrease significantly. And that's what, that's what we're here to do. And again, without a prescription pad, right? Without a drug. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. We'll post the links to all those free gifts in the show notes. So thank you for coming on the show. You clearly practice what you preach, which is wonderful. I love your story. Uh, I'd encourage all the listeners to check out your books, of course. 
Um, so we will, yeah, again, we'll post those links in the show notes. So I just want to thank you for being so open and vulnerable and sharing your story and just for your passion with what you do. I'm, you're changing the lives of so many women and, and, and men, <laughs> yeah. but specifically women. So thank you so much, Dr. Anna. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you.